10 feet in diameter. And, and I think that's why we're in the redwoods. We, we want to use the redwoods to say, we can do this. Deforestation, together with climate change and overuse, is at the heart of another major land degradation problem. Desertification. In June, the UN warned it could cause an environmental crisis of global proportions. That's the end game, you know, desertification when there's nothing but silicon left. You know, that's what you've got. No water, no soil, no atmosphere, just silicon, you know, and that's desertification. Already in Central Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa, millions of people are being forced to move. The UN report says that could jump to 60 million within the next 12 years if desertification goes unchecked. In Sudan, where conflicts have forced millions of people into desert camps, increased population is taxing water resources and stressing the land by overplanting and grazing. If you look at where you could have a cow, you know, 20 years ago, you can't have a cow there now. You have to have a camel there, you know. As a result, topsoil there is eroding and blowing away, converting much of the region into Sahara. In northern China, sand from the Gobi Desert has been migrating at a rate of 2,400 square kilometers a year, overtaking everything in its path. Whole towns have disappeared and sandstorms frequently pass through Beijing. Dust from China has even crossed the Pacific Ocean and reached the United States. The encroaching sands of the Gobi Desert are such a threat in China that the government has invested $8 billion into the largest reforestation project in the world. The Green Wall of China. A buffer of poplar trees and grasses that will stretch some 2,800 miles from Inner Mongolia to Beijing. Though many have criticized the campaign as an expensive boondoggle, China says it's already rolled back some 8,000 square kilometers of desert and believes it will eventually reverse desertification. The Environmental Performance Index looks at a variety of land use issues, including desertification. Our measure of ecoregion protection looks at the different kinds of ecosystems that a country has. Because it turns out that you want to have different things happening on the prairies versus the mountains versus the grasslands versus the forests. For protecting their country's ecosystems, Luxembourg, Greenland, and Belize earned relatively high marks, while North Korea, Turkey, and Haiti help round out the bottom of the list. While these wild spaces keep our world habitable, providing everything from the water we drink to the air we breathe, they mean even more to the creatures that live in them. We share this planet with some two million different species, and those are just the ones we know about. Scientists believe some 90% more are yet to be discovered, and last year, more than 800 new species were added to the list. In Suriname and Colombia, biologists discovered two dozen new wildlife species in the rainforests. Among them, brightly colored frogs, several types of dung beetles, and a new type of forest ant. In Vietnam, a snake, two butterflies, and five varieties of orchid. In Congo, a bat, two shrews, and two frogs. In Brazil, Anthropologists even discovered a lost tribe of humans. For people to hear that there are new species being discovered and that there are these wild places that exist, it, 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 it just computes as good. Faye himself helped bring to light another major wildlife discovery last year, a migration of antelope in southern Sudan, which in sheer numbers of animals rivals the more famous animal migrations of the Serengeti. Well over a million antelope, 1.3, 1.4 million antelope um, in southern Sudan where people think there's nothing left, you know. Last year, we also witnessed a fair share of success stories in wildlife protection. After 35 years of recovery, the poster child of the U.S. Endangered Species Act 
the American bald eagle was taken off the list. Thousands of eagle pairs now populate a region covering most of the eastern U.S., northern California, Alaska, and much of Canada. And so long as their habitat remains protected, they're healthy enough to survive on their own. Last year also brought good news for another majestic creature, the blue whale, the largest animal ever to live on this planet. Blue whales' numbers dwindled only to a few hundred in the southern hemisphere. Now, scientists have discovered more than 2,000. The news is encouraging, but with only an estimated 4,500 blue whales left in the world's oceans, they are still endangered. And unfortunately, there were also a number of species last year that joined its ranks. The Indian gharial, the western lowland gorilla, and China's Yangtze River dolphin were all deemed critically endangered. The dolphin may have even gone completely extinct. In my time on our watch, we have seen the loss of that amazing creature. These are big, charismatic animals. What else is being lost? In the lush mountains of Central Africa, in Congo's Virunga National Park, another iconic species teeters on the brink of extinction, the mountain gorilla. Only about 700 of these gentle giants are left in the wild, thanks to habitat destruction and poaching. And last year, four of them were found brutally killed in what's believed to be a warning by local rebels looking to profit off the wood in the gorilla's protected habitat. The savagery that exists in situations like that is unthinkable. It is a way for them to send a message saying, you know, we're going to kill anything in our path, and so you better leave. The pictures couldn't be more disturbing. Depicting fatal gunshot wounds to a full-term pregnant female and a large male silverback and a live baby gorilla clutching its dead mother. It was the largest single killing of gorillas in the past 25 years. And according to the Wildlife Conservation Society, if the forest isn't secured quickly, we could lose the entire population. And to lose um, uh, the mountain gorilla is, is a catastrophic thing for the planet, and we shouldn't let it happen. And if we decide not to let it happen, it won't happen. When it comes to protecting wildlife and habitats, once again, the Environmental Performance Index reveals that some countries stand out as models for the rest. Sri Lanka, Portugal, and Kenya are all creature-friendly, taking action to track and preserve threatened species as well as protecting their habitats. On the other hand, Italy, Pakistan, and Guatemala score low on the rankings, risking the health and long-term survival of the species that live there. Not all wildlife issues this past year were so well understood or so easily linked to humans. All over the United States, as well as parts of Canada, South America, Europe, and Asia, farmers and scientists encountered an epic mystery. Billions of seemingly healthy honeybees fled their queen, their offspring, and their food stores and vanished. Honeybees pollinate a third of all American crops everything from apples and broccoli to almonds, valuing them at billions of dollars annually. Not to mention the 150 million there